barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free, hit the subscribe button. Man. <laughs> Boy, I just got humbled real quick. I'll tell y'all real quick. I'm oh man. I'm uh, I'll tell you real quick. My uh my windows didn't qualify for the airport because I have I, I I have a property that goes over the flight path so those of you guys in other cities if you have property that goes over the flight path they have these windows that they'll pay to install your windows for free and my shit didn't qualify by fucking two blocks and if you ever want a humbling experience try putting new windows in a new building <laughs> Thousands of dollars, man. This fucking hurt to be right now, man. I just paid that fucking bill, man. So, anyways, needless to say, there's gonna be no Easter in my house this weekend. <laughs> Thank God I ain't gotta pay for gas. But, anyways, man, Eddie Hearn went the fuck off on Big Baby Miller. And guess what, Eddie Hearn? I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you're setting the precedent. I'm glad you're setting the tone because, like you, I can't stand that shit. I don't mind if niggas want to get buff and use steroids and do what they want to their life, but I think it's there's a level, there's some, there's a criminal element to a motherfucker using steroids in, in a combat sport, you know. And uh, I didn't say hand combat. I'm, I'm talking about football and all this shit too, because it's just, it's just insane. That nigga, Big Baby Miller, took every steroid. I mean. I'm assuming, I'm not the expert on it, but I'm assuming he took needles, he digested some shit. I don't feel sorry for the nigga, man. And I applaud Eddie Hearn. I fucking applaud Eddie Hearn, man. I watched that I watched that uh, video on IFL TV. I'm sure many of y'all gonna watch that shit too. And uh, he went off. He said he don't know if he can trust him again, but obviously time heals all wounds. Remember your high school arch enemy? You see the nigga driving down the hood. You say what's up. You ask him how his family's doing. So time heals. Time heals most wounds, right? Like when someone died, you're crying every day. Three months later, it stops you for five or ten minutes. Six months later, you can live your life and have those emotional thoughts, you know. So, so at the end of the day, man, it's just uh, I, I I just genuinely applaud Eddie Hearn for taking a strong stance, like. Uh, and I think it's in, in, incredibly important that we all take those stances, you know. Uh, it, it's just a... He didn't just cheat. N now, let's be clear. People were giving him credit for being honest. The nigga's been cheating his whole fucking career. He is... He, there's a level of insecurity in Jarrell Big Baby Miller. There's a level of insecurity because... Because... When you don't feel like you're better than someone... And I've been competing my entire life. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every time I stepped on the basketball court, I I knew I was better than the opponent, right? So what I had to do was I had to lean on my work ethic. I had to pick up the guy from free throw line to free throw line and hope and pray that, I mean, I played against Baron Davis and Jason Hartz, the Ben Sanders, the Jason Sanders when I was in high school, if I, if I, I'm, if I remember if you guys know who they are, right? And uh, um, I wasn't taller than him. Definitely wasn't better than Baron Davis. No, no guard in high school was better than Baron Davis in the southern section. And but I had to guard him from elbow to elbow, from free throw line to free throw line, in hopes that he had a bad fourth quarter. Did you hear me? I I had to hope and pray that I fatigued him enough that. Maybe he missed a jump shot in the last two minutes of the game, you know. So, so I understand being a being an inferior athlete in comparison to great athletes. Baron Davis was an elite basketball player. Obviously, he was the third pick in the NBA draft with a torn ACL. Right, amazing, right? And um, so, so, so I say all that to say. I never, obviously it was high school, I'm not a professional athlete, and you guys are going to say there's levels to this shit. It's a mindset. It's a mindset when you believe you are inferior to a person. You know, you lean on your hard work. Lean on your hard work. If you're not better, you're not better. There's still room for you in the sport of boxing. There's still room for you in professional sports, you know, and I, I, it's, it's, it's just besides me that 
You know, we can't give Big Baby Miller credit for being honest. The nigga's been lying his whole fucking career. You think he had... This is his first Vada. This is his first Vada tested fight, according to Eddie Hearn. I, I don't know this. I, I'm not, I've been following Jarrell Big Baby Miller career that tough. The niggas, in my humble opinion, he's been cheating his whole entire career. He just got caught. On some levels, Jarrell Big Baby Miller career is a fraud. And on another level, he's a genius for promoting himself as such. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I... Do I, as I said in my other video, there's going to be a level of, of a redemption song, obviously. And, and I hope that he can recover from this. I hope that he can, um, you know, um, get a six-figure payday down the line. It's going to take, shit, at least two years, three years for him to even think about a million-dollar payday, you know. But um, I just think that um, Sideshow Bob, that shit that he does, is over. Sideshow Bob is done. Sideshow Big Baby is done. Accusing people of steroids, talking about somebody's mama, cheeseburgers, all that shit. It's over. Now, there's still 49 other states this man can fight in. I just want y'all to know that. Every state has their own commission. Remember when, remember when Mike Tyson got suspended for biting the ear? The nigga went down to Memphis and fought Lennox Lewis. You know what I mean? So, I mean, don't think that there isn't ways around this. New York is just going to ban them. And... Let me talk about the ultimate opportunity. He had the ultimate opportunity, man. It, it's like Stephon Marbury playing for the Knicks. Uh, Baron Davis playing for the Clippers. Uh, you know, imagine... Pat, well, Patrick Ewing's not, but he went to Georgetown. But, George, I mean, Patrick Ewing playing for the, the Knicks. You know, I know he's not from New York, but he was Jamaican, Jamaica, Queens. I'm, you know, I'm whatever. Uh, but you guys know where the point I'm going. It's like... Uh, Who's a starting quarterback in the NFL that end up playing for their home team? Callan Kaepernick went to Nevada, right? Played for the 49ers. Um, you know, it just happens like that. You get lightning in the bottle, and it happens, and, and the universe works in your favor. Jarrell Big Bang and Miller had, it's basically like my dream was to obviously play for Syracuse. When I was uh, when I was a kid, I was a Syracuse fan, born and raised in New York. Syracuse was my favorite school. I, it was a dream for me to go past, you know, to be next in line after Sherman Douglas, you know, Pearl, Pearl Washington, and uh, all the other Lawrence Moton, Adrian Autry, all those great guards that came out of New York and end up going to uh, well, Lawrence Moton is from D.C., but. Uh, end up playing for Syracuse and that was my dream right this nigga big baby Miller had a dream come true come true y'all need to put this in y'all need to understand this he had a dream this was a dream for him to fight in Madison Square Garden in front of all his high school friends and he could say I told you so I told you I was gonna be great I told you I was gonna be the best fighter in the world at first it was kickboxing, but then I picked up boxing. I knew I was going to find greatness. Now do you understand the level of greatness, Deontay Wilde? I'm going to do a separate video. Now do you understand a man coming into the ring 205 pounds on fight night? Now do you understand the levels of greatness? This man ain't cheating. This man just got the motherfucking Bama Slammer that can knock kingdom come in the kingdom out. You know what I mean? That's why I fuck with the, the nigga don't cheat. The nigga does it the right way. Hard work. The nigga gonna be 220 something pounds against uh, uh, what's that nigga name? What's that nigga name? MC Halfbreed. What's that nigga name? I, I'm drawing the blank on his name. MC Halfbreed. Dominic Brazil. You know what I mean? Fucking what that nigga say? Uh, Ebonics Dictionary. Nigga. Fuck. Urban Dictionary. Oh man, that, that shit. That shit made my stomach turn, man. You know what I mean? Like, I just made my stomach turn, man. MC half-breed ass nigga, man. But anyways, man, as I died... And, uh, man, I'm, I can't wait to tell him how, how that shit was so offensive, man. You know what I mean? Slauson and Crenshaw again. This is the hood. You know what I mean? This is the epic center in L.A. of black existence. You need anything in L.A., come to, uh, come to Slauson and Crenshaw. Just like in Alvarado Street, if you need something... In, and, and for uh, for my Latino community, you go to Alvarado, right? You need something, you come to Crenshaw and Slauson or King and Slauson. 
You ask around, you'll find what you need. <laughs> so anyways, man, Eddie Hearn, I, I genuinely salute you, man. This nigga had the opportunity of a lifetime, man. Man, you know how bad I wanted to play in Madison Square Garden as a kid? Don't you know it took me 41 years? I, I it was My first time in Madison Square Garden was in January. It took me 41 years to get a ticket to go to Madison Square Garden. Do you understand what I'm saying? It took me 41 years, man, to get a ticket and watch the Knicks play in Madison Square Garden. This nigga was fighting in Madison Square Garden in front of his mother. His mother could have caught the train. Don't you know how... Remember when Jay-Z caught the train to Brooklyn? That is special for us to hop on the train. Nipsey, the marathon continues, man. This is Nipsey. Uh, this is it. So, yeah, they still out here showing, showing their respect to Nipsey. Let me put this phone down so y'all niggas don't know where I live because I ain't done yet. But anyways, man, I, I, I just want... Oh, it's 420 too, so niggas going to be throwing up blunts. Nigga's gonna be sparking blunts to Nipsey today. So it's gonna be like a little, it's gonna be like a little thing on Slauson today. Nigga's gonna be out in the street on Slauson because it's 420 and we got these smoke shops all up and down the neighborhood. But um, it's, it's, it's just asinine to me, man. It's just, I, 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 I just can't believe it, man, that this nigga would blow his opportunity. God damn, what the fuck happened here? Uh, LAPD, y'all see this shit, look, LAPD, LAPD, they out, and, they out and about, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what's going on in the hood, I don't know, but anyways, man, that's the hood I live in, so, uh, as I told you guys, one side of Crenshaw, I swear before God, well, it used to be, you can get a home for $500,000, you cross Crenshaw, 1.1 million. One million. It's, it's, it, it is the most asinine thing in the whole entire planet. I, I, I don't understand how you can just cross one street and you got million dollar homes. You cross the other side of the street, you got five and six hundred thousand dollar homes, seven hundred. It's just, I, I don't understand it at all. So, anyways, man, as I'm talking about Eddie Hearn, man, it's just, uh, it, it, it just don't make any fucking sense. Jarrell Big Bay Mill blew his fucking opportunity, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh... I... To summarize this video, man, I get emotional about shit like this when... When black men... Blow their opportunity, man. It, it, like, it angers me. It, it angers me when they blow opportunities and, and they let white men control them by that fake-ass narrative, man. You know what I mean? Like, it bothers me when, when black people don't understand the power that they have. Also, it bothers me right now when, um, uh, I'm home now. Y'all see how close I live to Nipsey store? But it bothers me when, um... Um, um, people get opportunities and then complain the rest of their life they never had an opportunity, man. It's like uh, Pee Wee Kirkland. Nigga, stop selling drugs and go play in the NBA, nigga. For real, for real. Okay, you're a playground legend. you rather sell drugs. You make more money today. But how about tomorrow, nigga? All these Pee Wee Kirkland ass niggas, man. I mean, you know... Yeah, those stories are cool, and we want to hear them, and I, I go online and watch them Pee Wee Kirkland stories, you know, the greatest basketball, street basketball player to come out of New York, and, you know, he sold drugs, he could have played in the NBA, but he chose, he didn't want to do that, I understand, you know what I mean, so, but, you know, it's not cool to me, man, listen, you, you're going to get an opportunity in your life, right, and, and I apologize. I, I'm unapologetic for being emotional about this because I love when black men get opportunity, man. You know, like um, you're like I said, you're going to get an opportunity in your life. OK. I, I, I'm telling you guys, whether it's a job promotion or whether it's a job, whether it's you beat a case, whether it's uh, you get an inheritance, um, whether you stumble upon a college scholarship, whether you get accepted into a, a beauty school, whether you get a nail tech school. I don't know what it is. 
someone hooks you up to get in a trade school, you get a discount on something, it propels you. You know, in my case, someone taught me how to do real estate. You know what I mean? Someone taught me how to do real estate, you know, and he kept on feeding me, feeding me, feeding me. You know, I would go to Vegas and blow $10,000 in a weekend, man, you know, and he says, no, that's ignorance, you know. You know, stop being a nigga, man. Be a wealthy black man, you know. And and that's the truth. It's not, I'm only great at one thing, and that's property. I didn't go to med school like Dre and become a doctor. I didn't go to law school like Fanon and become a doctor. I mean, become a lawyer. I didn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't great at basketball. I, I, I failed at basketball, right? I didn't make, I never made any money playing basketball, so I failed at it. It was a hoop dream that failed, all right? I thought I was going to be the next Isaiah Thomas, and I wasn't. You know, it, it took me 30 years of my life to realize, hey, I need to get into this property thing. So I said that to say, do not be discouraged. All right. Do not be discouraged. All right. Whether you can have the greatest personality on YouTube, you can make a million dollars on doing YouTube videos. I don't know what it is, but I'm but I'm here to tell you search and find it. And when you get the opportunity, don't fucking blow it. Don't be a nigga. All right. Be a nigga in the barbershop, man. C can we talk about how many bitches we done fucked, how many blunts we smoked and how many bitches we about to fuck, how much money we done paid for this in the barbershop? Can we do that shit in the barbershop? But when we step out that fucking barbershop, can we be kings? Can we take advantage of opportunity? Sometimes it's going to be a white man to give you the opportunity. It was in Korean. It Not a Korean. Vincent Hung. Y'all need to Google this nigga. Vincent Hung. All right. Um. He's a doctor, and 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 and, and uh, somebody sent him a thank you letter for me, and tell him that you send him a, a thank you email. He's easy to find online. He told me I was gonna be rich. He told me I was gonna be wealthy. He sat me down at a Super Bowl party. He says, "Fred, I was training his daughters. His daughter was a great athlete, right? And uh, he, he's a, a cosmetic doctor. He does breasts and all the augmentations and all that shit, right? He makes fifty thousand dollars a day, right?" And um, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a day, this man makes for real. He has three offices here in LA, and uh, um, he says, "Fred, he says you're gonna be wealthy one day, but training, you can't duplicate yourself. You only can be in one place at one time." And Instagram wasn't around. See, I could have been a cyber trainer and had classes and did all that shit, but I wasn't thinking that far. I, I wasn't thinking that. And he told me, he wasn't the first guy, but he was like, his house looks down on the Gettys Museum. That's how wealthy this man is. He's at the top of the hill somewhere, right? And and off of Sepulveda, off the 405, right? And and I was at a Super Bowl party. He has this grand piano in his living room that overlooks the whole uh, San Fernando Valley. And he told me I was going to be wealthy one day. I didn't know how I was going to be wealthy one day, but... He, he knew my exuberance for wealth, to be rich, to be successful, you know. And I'm nowhere near where I want to be. But I, um, but I understand the steps that you need to take and not cheat yourself. And Big Baby Miller cheated himself. And I, I'm here only as one example. There are other examples on the line in the LDBC of levels of success. Man, look at Ticket TV's channel, man. The nigga went from talking about boxing to now talking about basketball he got merchandise he done collaborated man that's beautiful and niggas say see see here's the catch when a black man does it oh man he's panhandling he's still he's still and he's this he's that when a white man does it he's genius before you watch your youtube videos there's a handful of white men telling you guys how they made millions of dollars on the line right we all seen those commercials right and they celebrate it right how about, how about the man who owns Coca-Cola and Frito-Lay? They got different levels. Each potato chip is its own company, right? Why has he got 10 different companies? Why Coca-Cola got 10 different types of soda? I don't know how many sodas they have, but you get what I'm saying, right? People say, oh, you're crazy. You're delusional. Stick to the course, man, all right? And bet and believe in yourself. I've always bet and believe on myself. And I've my shortcuts now at... I cheated when I was young. I cheated my way through college. I cheated my way. You know, I'm not going to sit and say I'm I'm 100% innocent. But now as an older man, I, I I don't cheat because I don't want it to come back. I don't cheat on my taxes. 
I don't cheat on none of that shit because I don't want it to come back on me. One mistake fucks up everything that I've done. Right? Even if Jarrell Big Baby Miller was clean for 18, 19, I don't know how many fights he had. This one fight, the biggest moment of his professional career, he got popped. So I said, that, I, man, come on, man. Love yours, man. All right, Eddie Hearn, you're amazing. In this one moment, you're amazing. I applaud you for standing up. All right, so when, so when and if Dillian White gets popped again, I need you to say the same thing. And it, this ain't a race thing. This is Jarrell Big Baby Miller filling a needle up and sticking this shit in his ass or in his thigh. I don't know where you shoot up at. I've seen it on, on TV and all that shit. But, uh, but anyways, man, I salute you. I honor you. I love y'all. Let's be better, man. We're going to be great, all right? We're going to be great, but it starts with you. It starts with your personal accountability. It starts with you finding your purpose. It starts with you believing in yourself. It starts, it starts with you building a circular influence around you of spiritual, physical, financial support system that will propel you to your highest peak, all right? I love y'all. Have a great Saturday. It's fight day! Danny Garcia. Somebody out there parlay uh, Danny Garcia and uh, uh, Crawford. All right, I'll, I'll do a video on that on my way to the fight so I can charge my phone and uh, upload the video at the same time because this shit takes your battery. But anyways, Barbershop Conversations, man. I love y'all. Have a great day. And I'm gone. Peace.